Hi, I'm Barry Godin and welcome back to BG Tips. Before we kick off today, I want to thank you guys so much for subscribing, following me along, but most of all, your comments down below. I've learned tons doing this and you guys have been recommending products, I've been buying them, I've got little chain link pliers, they're coming from China, they'll be with me in about four months time. Uh, but as other things, I've got dental floss now in my toolkit and everyone's got some great recommendations. I've bought a few more lights, we've got a bit better technology wise, so the series is improving. So as I said at the beginning, together we can make this a better place to be. But I particularly wanna thank you very, very much. But today, episode seven, we're gonna be talking about cooking. And at the top of the list, you see stoves. What makes the difference between stoves? Some are bigger, some are smaller. It's also how quickly do they boil water? Um, do you really want to put baked beans in one? What can you cook with it? Can you change the temperature of it? So there's lots of different things with stoves. Um, but the bare minimum for myself is just to boil water. But the first stove I ever bought was a MSR Pocket Rocket. This is the first version and it's still brilliant. It has great kind of power for it. It has a large air surface area. So if you put a big pot on it, it's not going to fall over and it has a great kind of regulation on there as well. But that's been brilliant over many, many years. So fuel comes in multiple types. It comes in obviously wood on a fire, but mainly for stoves, it's gonna be gas or it's gonna be liquid based. So it's other meths, white gas, and variety of other ones you can burn in there as well. So when we went to Iceland, we, didn't, we couldn't fly gas in the plane, and we also knew that we had to carry so much of it that we thought we'd go liquid. Also, the fact we knew it would be quite cold, so liquid stoves burn a little bit better in the cold. But that equals a much bigger stove. So this is the MSR Whisperlite stove. It's absolutely huge, and you have to carry that as well. So we're talking a fair size. But if you're gonna ride around the world, you can put any liquid in there and it's gonna burn. Um, <clears throat> it's an amazing stove. Some things flow better through it than others, um, I have to say. The materials I used for going to Peaks to Scotland for my training didn't really work out very well. But we ended up finding something called white gas in Iceland and that burnt really nice and clean, clear. This is a little windshield you got for it, so that's the way you set it up. And then you've got then your um, kind of base, which you do want to put down because it might burn the ground, uh, because it's quite a violent stove. But if you want to do some proper cooking, this is the chat to take with you. You can vary the flame, um, which means you can do some really nice simmering if you're making a soup or something like that. You then have to tuck this in here. Uh, you then have to pressurize it after that. I haven't got any liquid in here, so don't worry. You then pressurize it to be able to get the fuel out of the system. Uh, you then have to clip it onto here. And I found it never sat that nicely. Um, it was always too close to the stove. You get really worried because you've got a bottle full of fuel uh, that's quite close to your stove. It's not that far away and it doesn't quite ever stand up. So you end up having to try and really find the right sweet spot. And once you've got that, you then undo this. You let a little bit of fuel into this um, weave underneath. That kind of sets it up and you don't have to prime the stove. You light it, it then heats it up. And what it does is it heats up this tube and that tube then starts to suck the fuel through the system. So then you can reopen it again and then the fuel ends up at the top. Then you light it, you have a really decent flame. That flame is pretty much what you're gonna have in your gas stove at home. It's pretty amazing. But again, quite a painful faff at the same time. Um, you do get used to it, but that's a lot of kit to take. But it is there for certain conditions. We took it to Iceland because as again, we can carry this amount of fuel. We took two bottles each, so we have more than enough fuel for all that time. Um, and we were cooking for two people, so it worked quite well. Since that trip though, I haven't used it and that's probably why it's um, not very clean. And please do tell me off because Dirty Kit does not look after you. So these are the cooking pots we took with that stove set. I believe they're called the Trail Duo and they're by MSR again. And they're really, really good, especially for a couple of people. So first of all inside, you've got that bit there and you've got these pots and pans inside. So a huge pot, which means if you're boiling, particularly if you're gonna filter water by boiling, we'll talk about filtering later on, it's brilliant for that reason. 
Um, but it's also quite good if you want to cook a big meal, a nice soup or a you know, curry or something. There's quite loads of space in there. These are your pots and pans that come inside. They're great. So you've got two bowls. Um, you've got two cups. These are thermal insulated cups with a nice lid. They're great for your coffee in the morning, but I have to say they almost keep your coffee too hot. So um, yeah, do be careful when you drink out of these, but they're brilliant. Quite a nice shape. Um, but the, probably the best thing about this set, or oh, very quickly, these are my oldest um, set of cutlery, which I'll talk about cutlery in a bit as well, but these are really smart. They're metal, they're really good, but they're quite heavy and quite big. But yeah, they're a bit of history for you guys. Um, they're quite nice and they'll kind of fold into each other and clip in and so you can't lose them. I can't even undo them, but yeah, there we go, they're quite smart. But why is this cooking kit so good? First of all, you've got your dinner, there are your bowls there, but in here you're having your coffee. How do you have coffee in the morning? Well, you stick this pole in here, you dial it in there quickly, and you've got a whole coffee press. So for those coffee snobs who are watching, Maybe this is an idea, it doubles up, off you go, pressurize your coffee. But um, you have to kind of work out which order you're cooking in because you don't want your porridge in the morning and then try and cook your coffee afterwards. So you have to work out a bit of a structure. So we often did coffee first, put those in the mugs, cleaned it and then did a porridge. You just kind of work out a bit of a pattern. The other really smart thing about this set on the top of the lid, you also find, whee, on the top of the lid, you also find there's some nice holes. That means if you've got some boiling water in there, you can actually pour it out without getting kind of scalded yourself. But no, really smart. It clicks on, that's how it holds, holds together. Really good set. Um, I've used this many, many times. It's great for like car camping in particular as well, but it's quite big for bike packing. And we were using backpacks on that Iceland trip, which is probably the last time we used the backpack. Um, so it is quite big. And my kind of cooking kit has got smaller and smaller over the years. So nowadays it looks something like this. And this is minute. If you compare this, this is your fuel, your stove, your cooking pot, two cups, two knives and forks, that's it. Compared to all this stuff on this table, that's how small it can become. Um, I worked hard to get to that size, especially after carrying all of this on many, many journeys. So yeah, you know what? I've learned, I've learned over time. So let's show you what's inside here. To start off on the top, you've got these. Ah, oh, these are brilliant. These are Sea to Summit cups. Um, I thought the first time I used them, they weren't gonna be very good because they're quite flimsy. But I'll tell you what, the top's not flimsy, so you hold it up there, you don't get scolded on the side, um, and if you do want to put it down, put it down on the ground, but if not, my shoes often by the front of my tent door, and that kind of sits in the top of my shoe, and also dries out my shoes. Top tip, put your coffee in your shoes. Um, I don't hope it doesn't pass on the smell. But no, these are really, really good. I have to recommend them. Inside here, next we've got the stove, we come to that in a second. We've got the knives and forks, got lighter, got gas, and there's my cooking pot. So that is really cool. So first of all, this is the Alp Kit Kraku, or Krakow um, stove. It's amazing again. Um, I've had this one ever since the Iceland trip. When we got back, I went everywhere to try and find the smallest kit, and this was the one recommended at the time, and it's been amazing. I think it's about 25 quid or 30 quid. Um, it's titanium, which makes it even cooler. All of this is titanium. Um, titanium is particularly good because it doesn't rust. Um, and also it's meant to be better at different temperatures. But first of all, that just whizzes on there. It looks super small, but I tell you what, it's got quite a big kick to it. So first of all, marvelous. There we go, we're cooking along. So we're gonna, uh, here's my river water from my fresh river outside of my house in London. Um, and that goes on top quite nice and neatly. Hey presto, we're off. Um, what's quite smart, I lost the lid one day, but I have to say the lid is quite annoying because as this is metal against metal, you're riding along and it's like bang, 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 bang. So this is why everything's in little socks, especially my knives and forks, because they rattle around in the back, bike, it's a pain. But So I lost the lid, but I ended up finding one of these cups <laughs> acts as the perfect lid on top. So that's the way I kind of use it. I have ever since as well. These are my knives and forks, and this has been tried and tested again. I've got two versions. I've got the new version, which is actually a little bit better as well. Um, these are foons or 
balks. <laughs> so they means you've got the best of both worlds. I don't often eat things that involve cutting, which is true, especially comes to dinner, the most dehydrated meals. The next video is all about food, which is brilliant. But this is about kind of cooking stuff. So yeah, there's the ones I use. So this is enough for two people. Um, I literally spent 10 days with my girlfriend last year in Scotland. Um, we cooked everything on this stove, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, it's brilliant. So yeah, you put your cup of soups in there. Um, and then we kind of boil enough food for dinner, water for dinner. So off to uh, water for dinner first, so that can be sitting there kind of pergolating. And then we'll pour out a cup of soup each, and then yeah, hey presto. And then for breakfast, um, it was coffee each in those, and then you kind of do your porridge in here, and then yeah, you eat out that happy days. So that is my favorite cooking kit, and that's the one I use all the time. So in actual fact, we're gonna just let you know how long that's gonna to take to boil. So we have to do all of this in real time, so let's hope it didn't screw it up. The other cooking stove I particularly have enjoyed is this one here by Alpkit again. It's called the Brew Kit. This is in a plastic bag merely because it stops it rattling around again. Um, I've used this on a lot of trips as well recently with some friends. It's kind of like, um, it's jet boil is the other famous term, but this one's about 30 quid again. That's your stove bottom which actually means it's great for the wind. That clicks on there, and then you get your, you can take a slightly larger can, because that can also does fit in there as well. I'm all about double uses here, you can tell. So that one there screws on that, happy days. And you'll probably notice this one will boil a bit quicker. Um, but back to my river water in real time. Smelling a bit gassy in here, hope the gas man doesn't come. Um, and then we kind of set that one off again. Oh, the, the little uh, the lighter seems to doesn't work anymore nowadays. Uh, so that's it. So I think we'll time them too. This one's a bit louder, so for stealth while camping, um, you may not be so unheard. I'm gonna just slide that over to there. God, it's all cooking. I told you we do some cooking today. And then uh, maybe we'll have a coffee afterwards. This is pretty cool. Uh, so whilst we're waiting for those two to boil, this might be too loud, <laughs> I hope it's not. I hope you can still hear me. Oh, and I haven't got my cup on this, it's an unfair test. And um, whether this has got enough, or I will turn them up as well. Right, uh, if not, if I do stop this, I'll put a little time in the top hand corner so you know how long the gap is. But we're gonna move on, I've got stereo stoves here, and we're gonna move on to cutlery. Here's my selection of cutlery, which I've used for the years. These things are called sporks, and I tell you what, the rubbish. They snap every time. They've got a good serrated edge, they're actually quite cool. Um, I quite like them, but they are not very good. If you sap your spork on the first day which your friend has on trips, you're a bit screwed for the rest of the trip. These are also by uh, Jet Boil. These were quite cool for cooking, especially on that last cooking set. You've got a nice fork, especially long so you get in the bottom. This one you do see anything something long because you actually notice how deep it is. It's about to stir, you don't want your little um, spoon, it's, it's a bit too uh, short for that. So that's particularly good for that reason. Um, I did buy the knife from Outkit as well. Titanium, all these are titanium. Um, they're also quite cheap for what they are. Uh, that is also a knife, but I don't use a knife really. And if I have to, I'll just take a knife with me. I actually think we've got some activity over here very quickly. Oh, I know it's riveting for you guys. We've definitely got bubbles forming on this side. We've got some bubbles this side. This is more to prove the fact that, yes, big stoves are gonna boil quicker and be easier to use, especially in groups of people. But if you can't put that on your bike, you saw how small that was in comparison to this. So sometimes size does matter. <laughs> and this is one of those occasions. Uh, and the uh, the last one we're going to talk about, which was we're in stove world. Oh, sorry, it's all a bit chaotic here. Um, is my lovely again? I believe it's titanium <laughs> windshield. This is by Outkit again. It's a funky colour. Um, the tin foil stuff from the MSR one before is quite difficult to use. It kind of splits and stuff like that. But that is real cute. Um, that kind of goes around quite nicely. It also has little pegs, so if you want to put it into the ground, you can do. Oh, I have to say, I think brew kit's actually one. Woo! Yes, we're definitely, we're definitely cooking in there. So we are, we are boiling. And in comparison, how are we doing in this one? We're just about getting there. It's going to take a little bit longer. Um, oh, isn't that exciting? I hope you enjoy yourselves. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, they're the two stoves. Um, well, we'll keep, we'll keep him going. We'll see how long he takes. I'll give him a little extra boost. But the brew kit is brilliant because it has all this stuff here. It's really dispersing the heat and making it all a lot, lot quicker. So big groups use that. Windshield does help. This has a built-in windshield. So this, I don't always take this if I'm going lightweight. Um, I'll often pile shoes up around it or things like that and <laughs> make it a bit kind of warm sheltered. The last one I'm not going to go into that much because there is a lot of people out there better than me on these. We are, we're cooking, we're cooking, we're boiling. Wee. We have a winner. So there's not that much difference in terms of time. Oh, the silence. And when you've been cooking in the wild and you're on your own, you're this... And it's going to eventually stop and then you... Sunny, all the birds and the bees again. It's quite lovely and quite peaceful. So I won't carry on shouting you anymore. We can kind of calm things down a little bit. But this is a meth stove. Um, I'm not a pro at these. Ask many, many other people about them. They are really cool. People worship them. They're super lightweight. They're super small because that's where you put your fuel. You screw that on and that's all you really need for a few days. Um, I just don't have that much experience with them. But that is tiny. And it probably actually worked quite well with this cooking set in terms of the size of it. That would also go inside there, but I kind of find the fact that that gas is quite easy and fast. And also you can vary the temperature of it well. So if you don't want it full turbo boil, you can kind of let it simmer if you're doing something nice inside the pot. And then um, winner. So that's the stove off. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> and we're going to move on. So next we're going to be talking about... Well, we can't be tidying up and not make a quick drink. Washing up. So probably the best thing for washing up is just hot water. Rinse it out and off you go. Any of these, don't use ferry up liquid because if you're going to be washing in a river or something like that, you are going to be contaminating that river. I thought this stuff was really, really good. It's biodegradable. I wouldn't recommend it pouring back into the river. Um, it's quite smart. This also works as an all-purpose soap. So it works on your body. You can wash your potatoes. You can eat those potatoes. You're not going to get covered in soap. We thought this was really, really good, but some of them pointed out to me that it's still quite, um, not really fish friendly. So do have a look at the labels, try and find one that's fish friendly. I'm not that hygienic. I literally just rinse it out and off I go. Happy days. And if a, if a fish has a bit of porridge, it's okay. Um, be any soaps, just be careful what you're putting into the planet. So next up, we're going to be talking about purifying water. And an amazing friend of mine, Paul Crane, taught me one thing. Do two of the three things. Boil it, use chemicals, or filter it. So if you do two of those three, you're gonna be safe. So I've used chemicals and filter it, or boil it and use chemicals, or either of those. I do find chemicals aren't that nice to use. So this is chlorine. You can drop this in your water. After a couple of minutes, it's gonna be nice and clean and sterile. Um, then you get other ones that which then change the taste of chlorine back to water. Um, I've used iodine to purify water as well. So and some things that are quite nasty about them, um, I, I don't really use them anymore. I, I've used them a couple of times in the past, but for now I just filter water and boil it. My first filter was a soil filter. This is brilliant, because all you do, you unscrew the end, you get your water bottle with your water in it, and you stick it in the bottom. That also means you can drink, it's got a little sports lid, you can drink the water out of the river straight away, and you know you're going to be relatively safe. Um, because you are filtering it. If you want to be double safe, obviously you do a filter and boil it, which is what you always do for dinner anyway. But this has been really, really great. It's quite small. You push it through yourself. Yes, it requires a bit of energy, but it's not that bad at all. That's quite chunky, but I've had that for many, many years, and you got a little bit, um, yeah, I didn't clean it too often. Often you have to backwash them. So uh, these are huge, but I don't take them with us, but in Iceland, uh, we were a bit silly and we were trying to drink glacier water. Don't drink glacier water because it's all the sediment. That sediment you'll be drinking, it gathers up inside your body and gives you gold stones. So not a good thing to do. Uh, but when we were doing it, we were putting it in the pan, the big pan you saw, and we were letting it settle at the bottom and then we try and filter it through that. Um, but obviously it all got bunged up. But what the idea with that is you unscrew the top, you stick that on there, you push it, ooh, you push it through, and that you back flush it, so that clears out any of those kind of particles inside. Um, it's lasted a long time. 
Um, I've never taken these with me, but when I come home, I did get a good push through. Um, that's another straw you can use with it. I then upgraded to the Soya mini filter. This is tiny. This goes everywhere with me. Everywhere, every trip. You never know when you might get stuck. It's so small as well. And just to quickly show how it works. So here we are, my fresh river water, um, which I have to say, getting water out of a river is quite tough. A quick top tip, get your cup, you scoop the water out, you then pour it in here. That changes your life the first time I thought of it. So I was going around always looking for running water that I could kind of hold this underneath. You're not always gonna find gushing water from a waterfall. Um, often it's lakes and stuff like that, which is fine to drink, but you kind of scoop it up, you pour it in, it's so much easier. That's stating the obvious, but I didn't think about the first few times. This um, the water doesn't fill up very well. And a quick thing about what water to drink, don't drew stagnant water. If it looks horrible, don't drink it unless you're really, really, really desperate. And even then don't do it because you're gonna be ill and be even more desperate wherever you are. And the idea is, is you choose running water. If it was a lake, make sure you're choosing the bit that's flowing, try and get the intake out or in. Um, and this is how you purify it. Literally just like that. That's not very difficult. It does take a little while to get a whole cup full. Often I'm only using that cup size. I don't know why I put it in this one, just so I don't make a mess on the table. Um, but it takes a little while, give a bit more welly, and it flows through. That's, that's fast enough. Um, so I have to say, there's no reason not to filter your water. If I'm talking to some Scottish people on this, uh, on this series, yes, you never filter your water. You just drink it out the burn and off you go. Um, I did do that once and I got pretty ill. So I at least do this for everything. I don't always boil it. I'll drink that straight away. Um, yeah, I don't always boil it and do the two at the three. But if it looks a bit iffy, I'll make sure I do that. Uh, but it just takes a bit while to boil the water then pour it into your bladder. Um, yeah, that is what I use for filtration. So the last thing on my list is a lighter. Yes, there's many bushcraft ways of creating fire and things like that for your stove. Lots of people use a flint as well. But I always struggle to make it work. Way! Um, oh, sparkling. Uh, but I have to say, there's nothing easier, sadly, than using that. It's the same idea, but it's much easier. It's rubbish in the wind, in the wet. That's where this comes in. Try and keep this in a little bag or something like that. Um, but yeah. That is a fire. <laughs> so that's it for cooking. I hope you've enjoyed that. I particularly have, especially the stereo burning of the stoves, um, particularly enjoyable. And even if it is just taking out a quick stove set to make a cup of coffee during the day, not even while camping, you've seen what size you can take it into. So happy adventuring until next time. Ciao for now. Um.